So today we'll be looking at the long brief for Tony. So since this is an online brief, I'll just skip over housekeeping. So to learn how to conduct turns during level flight, climbing and descending at various angles of bank. So uh, in this lesson we'll be looking at theory of turns, the techniques and procedures involved in turn um, in a level, climbing and descending turn. Motivation to extend the ability to change the direction of flight of the aeroplane. So that means to control the aeroplane through any heading of 360 degrees. To maintain the aeroplane in a balanced and safe attitude. So that's to do with the airmanship side of the lesson. You know, um, making sure the aeroplane is uh, balanced. Um, and keeping the aeroplane in a trim position as well. Uh, to coordinate the aeroplane's directional situation. And ultimately navigate to a destination efficiently. So this allows us to navigate our aeroplane to not only in the training area, but to nearby airports. And that's one of the main purposes of flying an aeroplane, to take us from point A to point B. So an overview of what we'll have a look at. So objectives, that's the take-home message. We'll have a look at revision from our descending brief. We'll have a look at uh, definitions that will be relevant today, uh, forces acting in the turn, factors affecting the turn, so some of the physical factors in terms of the aeroplane. We'll have a look at the turn performance um, as well, in terms of rate and radius of turn. We'll have a look at applications, so types of turns which we outlined in the aim. We'll look at the airmanship and threat aeromagic considerations, so are the threats that exist in this lesson and how we can mitigate the risks. I'll summarise everything and then finally ask you a few questions with the objectives. So following this brief, you'll be able to, from memory, the same component of lift provides a central point of force in a level turn. So this is important, you know, as pilots, we want to know what actually causes our aeroplane to turn in the first place. State one type of turn would you experience a tendency to overbank. So this is important because um, we need to know what actually um, you know, will cause the aeroplane, what turn will cause the aeroplane to overbank, and you know, how we can manage that in flight by um, you know, holding off in terms of aileron. Um, so the effect of um, would be on the stall speed with an increase in ang angle of bank. So um, you know, stalling is an undesired aircraft state. It's where the lift, when the wings no longer produce lift. So that's why we don't want we want to know what happens to our stall speed when we increase our angle of bank. And then um, describe what increasing uh, what effect increasing angle of bank would have on the radius of turn. We'll have a look at that in terms of our turn performance. So a little bit of revision, so you can pause the video um, so that you can come up with the answers, but I'll read the answers now. So what are the pre-entry checks in the PA-28? So reference point selected, kindly as required, mixture with which T's and P's agree, and then doing a good thorough look at. So this is relevant because uh, we want the airplane to be configured to the minimum effect. Now we've got the threat in this lesson of traffic, so there will be not during the pre-entry check, as the undesired class set will be an airport so effect. So make sure you clear the turn. What is the maintenance cycle for a descent? So it's our attitude, look at our attitude performance. So a lap cycle, so it's the same maintenance cycle we'll be doing uh, in our turning lesson, but we'll check things in according to different proportions. So the power saving and attitude for a glide descent for the PA-28 warrior. So it'll be 73 knots, and this is important because we'll be doing a gliding descending turn. So we want to make sure that we maintain that 73 knots. And then finally, state the effect of the headwind, so straight wind, on angle and rate of descent. So here we have an aeroplane in nil-wind conditions, so if we have a headwind, um, the parcel there moves, so if we have a tailwind, that parcel there moves that way, and our angle decreases, but our rate stays the same. When we have a headwind, this parcel of air moves that way, so we have a um, higher um, angle of descent, it's increased, and rate of descent stays the same. So... Uh, Definitions, so angle bank, the angle between the aeroplane's lateral axis and the horizon. So here we've got the aeroplane um, lateral axis goes from wingtip to wingtip, and that's that angle over there in between the horizon. And it's also marked in the artificial horizon, um, so we've got 10, 20 and 30 degrees marked, uh, 45 degrees is in between 30 and 60, and 60 is over here, and 15 would be in between that 10 and 20 as well. Um, And um, heading is the direction of the aeroplane's nose in relation to north. So heading can be anywhere from 0 to 359 degrees. Is measured in a clockwise direction as indicated on the compass. So in the training area, unless otherwise I advise, we will be flying all of our turns from 360 degrees. Rate of turns, the number of degrees of change in heading per second. So when you see that word rate, it's to do with the unit of time. So here we're looking at um, how the aeroplane turns 30 degrees in 10 seconds, so the rate of turn is, um, we divide, do 30 divided by 10, so we get a rate of turn is 3 degrees per second. So rate 1 turns are also done in 
a basic instrument flight lesson, so it's just a bit of an introduction when you do it, but in this lesson, um, you know, we don't measure our turn in terms of rate, but the angle of take. So, the aeroplane turns 30 degrees in 10 seconds. Radius of turn, the distance between the aeroplane and the centre of the turn. So the centre of the turn is an imaginary point, and it's a point about which the aeroplane turns around. So it's that distance between that centre of the point, turn, um, and the fuselage. And um, angle of bank and airspeed can affect both our rate of turn and radius of turn, which we'll have a look at as well. Load factor, the ratio of lift to weight of an aeroplane. Units in which our load factor is expressed as is G-forces, e.g. 2 Gs. So, for example, in 6-3 state turn, we need twice the amount of lift, so weight stays the same, so we have a load factor of G, so 2G. So when we're feeling twice the force of gravity, so whenever you increase lift, you're going to increase load factor. But in this lesson, in medium level turns, we won't increase our load factor by that much, that you'll be able to feel it. Centripetal force. A force that acts on a body, moving in a circular path, and is directed towards the centre around which the body is moving. So this is a diagram of a person spinning on the rock. Centripetal force acts towards the centre of the turn, and it's that necessary force which is required to keep the aeroplane moving in a curved path. A force arising from the body's inertia, which appears to act on a body moving in a circular path, and is directed away from the centre around which the body is moving. So in terms of inertia, we looked at that in straight level. Um, so, you know, that um, object at motion or in rest will stay in motion or rest, unless acted upon by an imbalanced force. So when, you, that, when that rock is sort of cut, um, it would travel, sort of travel in a straight line, as you can see, um, with the direction of the green arrow. Um, and centrifugal force, it's is equal to centripetal force, um, and centrifugal force is generated pretty much by the body's inertia, and is also seen in a washing machine, um, where it spins fast and gets all the water out, or in a salad spinner as well. So forces in a turn, so in straight level flight, lift balances weight and all of your lift is acting vertical. So lift equals weight. During a level turn, the necessary turning centripetal force is provided by banking the aeroplane um, and the control surface that allows us to bank our aeroplanes is the ailerons and that causes our aeroplane to bank. So for example, here, 30 degrees. And now our lift is acting towards diagonally. This however tilts the, tilts the lift component. Uh, the vertical component of lift will not be enough to balance weight and the aeroplane will descend. So as you can see in this image, so it's not that our lift is decreased, it's that our lift is not enough um, to balance us in level flight. Um, and the aeroplane will start to slip. If you, you know, if you remember from effects of control, um, if you don't just bang the aeroplane, the aeroplane will slip and lose height. Um, the angle attack must be increased in order to maintain level flight. This is achieved by applying bank pre back pressure on the control column, and you'll see this in flight. What we'll do is we'll do bank balance back pressure um, to provide that necessary increase in lift. This also increases the horizontal component of lift. So um, this is also horizontal component lift or centripetal force. They're both the same um, thing. Um, and so in terms of this diagram, so we've got the vertical component of lift, and then when we bank the aeroplane, um, we get the extra lift by applying that back pressure, which as a consequence increases our horizontal component of lift. Um, and since centripetal force equals centrifugal force, our centrifugal force increases and so does our load factor as well. And whenever lift is increased, that's why load factor increases as well. So forces in turn, so lift is greater than weight. Uh, it's one of the only maneuvers, you know, in a climb, in a descent, uh, or in straight level flight, lift either equals weight or is less than weight. But in this manoeuvre, lift is greater than weight. Weight equals the vertical component of lift, uh, and the horizontal component of lift provides a centripetal force to turn the aeroplane. So remember this was in our objectives. And due to the constant change, due to the constant change of direction, the aeroplane is not in equilibrium um, as well. But in straight level full climbing descending, the aeroplane was in equilibrium, now turn isn't. So the increase in angle attack will result in an increase in drag. Um, and it will decrease performance, and this is specifically induced drag. The performance loss will show as a decrease in indicated airspeed. If the increase in drag is small, the performance loss will also be small. So you see this in the training area in flight. What will happen is our airspeed will decrease uh, from that cruise speed, about 105 knots, uh, but we can accept this small performance loss.
So factors affecting your turn. So we've got overbank, underbank, balance, skidding turn, slipping turn, turn, adversarial, and load factor. So overbank. Evident during climbing turns and level turns where the outer wing travels faster than the inner wing as it travels a greater distance and the outer wing has more lift causing the aeroplane to roll into the turn. So even with the entities lift more, you've got more the, um, even as you can see with the distance, this wing is stuck onto the fuselage, but it has to travel faster in order to keep up. Um, and the increase in speed increases lift and causes it to roll and overbank in the turn. This is further increased in a climbing turn where the outer wing has high angle attack and faster speed. So to counteract this, the pilot will need to hold off the bank angle. So we'll see this in flight, and in terms of a climbing turn and medium level turn, you will need to hold off to maintain that um, specific angle of bank. And even in terms of this diagram, so um, in terms of the horizontal distance between the left and right wing and the gain in height, with the relative airflow striking the wing, the outer wing has a higher angle of attack um, than the inner wing, but the, they're both stuck on the fuselage. They've both got the same sort of cord line, but the outer wing has a higher angle of attack. So not only do we have the faster speed, but the higher angle of attack, especially in a climbing turn, is when it will be most noticeable. So make sure you hold off from the aileron. So underbank, evident during descending turns where the angle of attack on the outer wing is lower than the inner wing due to the dihedral wing shape. So as you can see, uh, the wings on our aeroplane is sort of at an upwards angle. This causes the aeroplane to roll out of the turn and to counteract this, the pilot will need to use aileron to hold on to the bank angle. So we'll see this in the training room with an underbank scenario, but it doesn't have an, it's not as great of an effect. What's happening is, so the, the outer wing is still traveling greater distance than the inner wing, it's traveling faster, so it shouldn't have an overbanking scenario. But because in terms of the horizontal distance, um, and in terms of the relative airflow, so uh, the lower the lower wing has higher angle of attack than the um, upper wing, and so the angle of attack and the faster airspeed are far hanging out, but the angle of attack wins as well. So that's why it's not as noticeable. You also think about a spiral staircase. You know the inner railing is a lot steeper than the outer railing. So balance, in order to maintain balance, scanning of the instruments is vital. Vital. So using the, um, the ALAPS local. Uh, so balance board and the turn coordinate indicates whether or not the aeroplane is in balance. So we looked at this in our flexible control. In this lesson, it becomes even more important to balance the aeroplane to prevent a skid or slip. So our objective is to keep the balance board in the middle throughout the turn. So make sure to step on the ball. So if you're skidding, you need to apply a little bit of left rudder. If you're slipping, a little bit of right rudder. If you're turning towards the right and make sure it's a balance all throughout the turn. So skidding turn, so the relative airflow strikes the outer wing first. So during a skid, the balance ball sits outside, uh, sits towards the outside of the turn and towards the higher wing. Um, the pilot feels a side load away from the turn. So it's kind of like if you're in a car and you're turning too quickly um, in a turn, you'll feel that uh, side load due to that skid. Um, and the pilot should apply less rudder in the direction of the turn. So in order to balance the airplane and have a nice and balanced turn, you need less rudder in the turn as well. And I'll show you as well in the training area what that skidding turn looks like. So slipping turn, so it's pretty much the opposite of a skid. The relative airflow strikes the inner wing, so the um, balance ball sits towards the lower wing, um, and the pilot feels a side load into the turn. And the pilot should apply more rudder in the direction of the turn. So to fix it, need a little bit more rudder in direction to even up and balance the airplane. So adversarial, uh, adversarial occurs due to the difference in lift produced by each wing in a roll. So you know that's how we achieve a roll in the first place. One ring wing produces more lift than the other. The outgoing lead wing generates an increase in lift due to the increased angle of attack, but this causes an increase in the drag. So as you can see. Let's say we're rolling towards the left. This aileron goes up, but this aileron goes down. Um, and we have high amounts of um, that induced drag, which, which um, and due to that drag, the aeroplane has an adversarial in the opposite direction of the turn. Um, and that's why we do bank balance back pressure, but we'll apply a bit of rudder to overcome the effects of that adversarial. So there are two design features that are used to counteract this tendency to yaw away from the turn. These are Fry's ailerons, and differential ailerons. So these are pretty much clever design features engineers have come up with to help us not exactly entirely overcome the ad effects of adversarial, but help us in the sense that we don't need to apply as much rudder.
So fries ailerons, so when the aileron is deflected downwards, the wedge tucks up into the wing and smooth airflow is maintained. Because um, that's the culprit, the aileron, and that's causing additional induced drag. So by maintaining smooth airflow, we're reducing it. However, when the opposite aileron is deflected downwards, the nose protrudes beneath the surface, which generates profile drag. So as you can see in this image, and sometimes it's either a it's either hinge, um, or wedge shape, or it's a rounded shape as well. Uh, this alleviates the need for large amounts of rudder deflection by evening up the drag. And by introducing more drag and smoothing the airflow on the uh, wing that's creating more drag, um, we're alleviating the need for large amounts of rudder. So our airplanes, the Piper Cherokees, do not have um, fries ailerons, but the Cessna airplanes do have them. So that's what you can see, that rounded nose as well. So differential ailerons. Differential ailerons are rigged so that the full extent of the down travel is half as much as the full extent of the upward travel. So what that means is, let's say we're rolling towards the left, and the down going aileron, the, um, it fully deflects upwards, but in the up going aileron, only deflects down as half as much. This produces more profile drag on the wing that moves down, and it helps to even up the drag on each wing and eliminates the lead for large amounts of yaw. Um, so once again, it works in a similar sense. Um, as the uh, fries ailerons um, and yeah this really um, helps put the need uh, eliminate the need for large amounts of rudder so load factor so uh, increasing back pressure to maintain long flight in turn results in an increased g-force uh, so the force of gravity and this is due to that increase in that centrifugal force so at 63 angle bank turn we need twice the amount of lift compared to straight level flight so the pilot feels two g's so, you know, we need two times the lift, our weight stays the same, so we feel the two Gs as well. So whenever we increase lift, we increase um, our load factor. And um, and you'll really see this, you know, especially in your steep turns lesson, you'll feel how heavy it will be to lift your hand. It feels as if, you know, you're twice as heavy, uh, but we won't go, we won't experience you know, a high amount of load factor in this lesson. So uh, vertical component of lift is still equal to weight, but we need twice the amount of lift, so our horizontal component increases, and so does our centrifugal force, which and we increase that. Um, we experience that increase in that load factor. So, so the PA28 has a stall speed of 50 knots in a clean configuration. So the stall speed is a speed below which level flight is not possible. Um, and yeah, we don't have enough airflow flowing over the wings to produce lift. The stalling speed in a 60 degree level turn, 2G, is calculated by new stall speed, which is the stall speed times square root of load factor, which is 50 times square root of 2, which is 50 times 1.4, which is 70 knots indicate airspeed. So therefore, as angle bank increases, our stalling speed increases. And you can also see in this chart uh, as well, uh, there's an exponential relationship between angle bank and load factor um, um, as well. So you know, especially with 40, you need one point, you feel one point, um, Four in 60, you feel two Gs, um, and 80, you can feel up to more than uh, 60, 66.5 Gs. And we'll threaten this lesson of loss of control, the RB accessing angle bank, and the undesired AFR state we stall. So make sure you maintain angle of bank. So, turn performance uh, the turn performance has two variables that we need to consider the rate of which at which the heading changes and the radius of turn. So, we've looked at these two definitions as well at the start of the brief. So turn performance in terms of bank angle. So a shallow angle of bank for a constant airspeed results in an increase in the radius of turn. This results in a decrease in the rate of turn. So it's kind of like if you're turning um, left um, in a car. So let's say you apply you know, a small amount of steering wheel movement. You need a large radius and you have a smaller rate. Whereas if you move the steering wheel a lot more towards the left, um, you have a smaller radius and a larger rate of turn. It's kind of the same thing with the training area. You know, when you complete a 360 degree turn, you'll quicker, complete a lot quicker in a um, 30 degree turn versus a 15 degree turn. So airspeed, the, a slow airspeed for a constant angle bank results in a decrease in the radius of turn. This results in an increase in the rate of turn. So you cover the circle a lot more quicker um, at a slower airspeed. But when you've got a faster airspeed, you're going a lot quicker, the circle is bigger as well. The same thing in a car. You know, turning left um, at 20 kilometers of hour, 
so 20 kilometers an hour versus 40 kilometers per hour. Um, you know, 40 kilometers, you have a larger radius of, of the circle and a smaller rate of turn. So in terms of the summary, so an increase in the angle of bank, so we only increase the results in um, an increase in the rate of turn, decrease in the radius of turn, and an increase in the line factor as well. And when you decrease angle of bank, the rate of turn decreases, radius of turn increases, and load factor decreases as well. And this is all for a constant airspeed. Uh, increase for airspeed for constant angle bank, so rate of turn, um, it increases, Rate of turn decreases and load factor stays the same. And for rate of turn, uh, it, if your airspeed decreases, your rate of turn decreases, your radius of turn increases, and your load factor stays the same as well. So reference point selected, and you must so to any turn, you must select a good prominent reference point because you've got that threat of terrain. Here over your losing reference point, and the undesigning class state will be designed to be orientation. So make sure you choose a good prominent reference point. Carby as required, so remember we need Carby below 2000 RPM, so we'll need it for our descending light turn. Make sure you reach two degrees of wind and look out for new in the direction of turn. So if you're turning towards the left, you're going to do clear right, clear centre, clear left, and clear behind to look out for any traffic as well. You don't want to be turning into any traffic. An easier way to remember it is you're going outside, you're going from right to left, Carby mixture, two speeds, and then you're going back outside. So it's a, you're doing bank balance back pressure, so it's a coordinated manoeuvre. You're doing all three things at the same time. So bank is directional turn, you do 30 degrees, control surface is ailerons, and the effect is um, controls the angle of bank. Uh, balance to ensure the air balance ball is in the middle. The effect is balance turn, and the control surface is rudder. And then back pressure past 30 degrees, the control surface is our stabilator or our elevator, and the effect is it controls our pitch. That's all. So turn entry, so divide the turn into 30 degree segments to mentally approximate the angle of bank. This shape should resemble a slice of pizza, so as you can see here in this image, and I'll show you as well in the training area, I'll ask you where that horizon is cutting. Um, and you want that 80% outside, 20% inside ratio as well. The attitude in the turn is very important as it allows the pilot to not only judge the correct angle back and the correct amount of back pressure. So if you're descending, if your nose is lower, you start to descend. For those is increasing pitch, you'll start to climb as well. So that's why it's extremely important. So maintenance of turn is done using air laps, so it occurs a lot more frequently in order to make those turn. And then a climb you could easily go through each of the steps at a time. But since we're turning and things can change quite quickly, you want to do it one step at a time. So attitude, ensure correct attitude, so both pitch and bank. Look out in the direction of turn, attitude, pitch and bank, and performance that your skid ball is balanced, um, your uh, compass. An attitude indicator, check if you've got the angle of bank, say 15 degrees, altimeter, your, your level as well, um, and your compass, your numbers are increasing if you're doing a right hand turn. Uh, an exit turn is simply done by anticipate the turn roll up by 10 degrees and bank balance back pressure in reverse. So bank the aeroplane to wings level, balance the aeroplane, and back pressure ease the back pressure. So in summary, bank balance back pressure. And resume the normal straight level configuration. So, power 25 RPM, attitude on the ground 2 thirds sky, speed 105 knots, and your trim and balance as well. So, there are three types of turns in the PA28. So, normal turns are at 30 degree angle bank, climbing turns 15 degrees angle bank, climb is established, then the turn, and then descending turns 30 degree angle bank, the descent is established, and then the turn. So, level turns, so power is left in the normal configuration, um, which we just discussed. We've got that overbanking tendency as well, um, and indicated airspeed will decrease by a small amount, which we're um, happy to accept. We don't need to do anything in response to it. And level turns in this lesson will be down to 30 degree angle bank. So, medium turns, uh, that's the angle bank of 30 degrees. If it's shallow, it'll be 15, and steep turn is 45 degree and 63 angle bank. So, medium turns, so left first off, reference points, slow gear, carried off, mixture fluid. Here's the green and look at so you turn towards the left, so clear left, clear center, clear right. Sorry, turn towards the right, clear left, clear center, clear right, and clear behind. So entry, so it's bank balance, back pressure, remember it's coordinated maneuver, and make sure you're trimmed as well, straight level flight. Um, then you can do attitude, look at attitude performance. So it's got, but make sure you're checking attitude, pitch, and bank, look out in direction of turn, attitude, and performance. You're maintaining height, you're balanced, um, and you're. Um, um, you've got the angle of bank as well on the artificial horizon, and then anticipate 
bank, balance, back, pressure. When you say that reference point, expect bank, roll up, balance, force them, and back, pressure, roll up. Um, if you're doing for a student, you know, if you're doing a left hand turn, um, the reference point is going to come a lot quicker versus doing a right hand turn, where that uh, reference point you'll see it come into view in terms of your uh, in terms of your windscreen. So climbing turns. So what is the best rate of climbing configuration? So that's full power, attitude, nose on the horizon, speed, uh, seventy nine knots, and trim. And remember, we've got the overbanking tendency, and we do it to 15 degrees, 8 times the bank to preserve that climb performance. Uh, if we do it to 30, then we might be that stall one and go around, and we'll experience so much drag that we won't be able to climb as well. The drag will increase as angle bank increases, causing the indicated airspeed to drop below 79 knots for the warrior. Um, and why would we do the climbing turn? Well, the reason being is because um, when to do the climbing turn, it allows us to you know, climb and also change our heading. You know, for example, if we're departing um, at an airport, that's what it would allow us to do. So climbing turn, so the angle of bank in a climbing turn, once again, it's limited to 15 degrees to keep drag at a minute. So you're going to pre-entry test, so reference points like a car enough, mission footage, TV is green, then you're going to do a thorough good look at. So as we mentioned as well, um, in terms of the climbing turn, the aeroplane is, situ is situated in the climb first, and then we do the turn. So, you've done your reference point, and then you're going to do the pass. So, full power, uh, and apply a bit of right rudder. Attitude, nose and horizon, speed, you want VY, 79 knots, and your trim and balance. And then entry is on using bank, balance, and back pressure. So, bank using ailerons, 50 degrees, balance board using your rudder, and back pressure using your stay motor. You may even need to lower the nose to maintain that 79 knots. Um, and then your A-lap cycle, so once again, that'll go a lot quicker, and control is done using C-jack. So A-lap, you're looking at maintaining 79 knots, looking for your target height um, as well, and you've got that 15 degrees, um, and you're balanced. Um, and then long nose every 500 feet to look out for traffic. And then two things could happen. You could either reach your height or your reference point. So if you reach your height, level off. If you reach your reference point, use VVP. So, so everything's so anticipate attitude, speed, power, trim, back into normal configuration. Um, and anticipate your bank balance back pressure as well. So bank roll out, balance full center, and back pressure relax back into the normal configuration. So descending turns are conducted in the best glide configuration. So best glide is um, power idle, um, a little bit of left rudder, attitude one foot ground, two foot sky, speed swing three knots, and trim and balance. And remember the descent is established and then the turn. So limit of the angle bank to three degrees due to exceeding load factor at low altitudes. As it's quite commonly done, um, at low altitudes, uh, as a safety factor, we limit to 30 degrees. We've got a bit of an underbanking tendency um, as well, um, due to the high angle attack of the lower wing, and due to the drag, the indicated airspeed decrease, so you may need to lower the nose as well to maintain 73 knots. Um, so why would we do descent turn? So if we're coming doing circuits, um, and we're turning and also descending at the same time, that's when we would use a descending turn. So once again, limit it to 30 degrees angle bank, so you're doing your pre check, so reference point selected, car beat off, mission for each piece of ring, and look at clear right, center, clear left, make sure clear behind and clear below. So establish descent, so power idle, left rudder, attitude, one foot ground, different sky, speed, seven three knots, and you're trimmed in balance. So entry is done using bank, balance, back pressure, so bank, 30 degrees, balance more centered, and back pressure. You need to lower, lower it a tad bit to maintain seven three knots. Um, and then you do your ALAP, you're a lot quicker. Your controls done using C jacks. A lap, you're making sure your attitude is fixed. Is fixed. Look at the direction of turn, attitude, and performance. You're maintaining 73 knots. Um, you know, you make sure you balance. You've got 30 degrees off horizon. Looking out for your target height. Um, and then two things could happen. Oh, once again, you need to warm the engine if you do a sailing past 5,000 feet. But exit is done using anticipate bank balance back pressure. So anticipate. Uh, so. Bank, roll out, balance for center, and back pressure, and A pass, but make sure to put that car be off, and back into the normal configuration. So aim and shift, clear the turn starting from the opposite direction, so if you're turning towards the left, you do clear right, center, clear left, and clear behind. Uh, link, limit angle back to 30 degrees at low altitudes, uh, sorry, at low altitudes, so we don't want to exceed that load factor. Limit angle back to 15 degrees in the climb, to preserve climb performance. During a lap, check both your pitch and bank. Um, um, and plus your angle bank and instruments, so that's really important as well. It's good to maintain a good successful turn. You must 
make sure your pigeon bank is good um, and you do your ALAT cycle and you do it in the right proportion 80% outside 20% inside keep the aeroplane balanced to make it a lot more comfortable um, and that's it to do a proper turn and smooth controls no abrupt movements so that's right in a moment we're already looking at it uh, more throughout the speech so we've got the throw of traffic there will be flail to clear turn and the underlying aircraft will be air proxy event to manage it will be clear the turn in um, clear in the direction of the turn and use ALAT cycle Threat of stall, error, there will be certain error, turn with your angle bank limits and loss of control. The error will be um, you know, excessive angle bank and terrain losing reference point and dissipate rollout, which is a good reference point and the undesired aircraft state would be uh, disorientation. So make sure you're orientated and, you know, in terms of you know, um, the turn, maybe it's not limited to these three threats. There's certainly a lot more that exists in this lesson. So summary, we looked at the objectives, we looked at revision from our design brief, we looked at definitions such as angle bank, Radius turn, rate of turn, um, centripetal force, centrifugal force, we look at the force stacking turn, the factors affecting turns such as overbank, underbank, skipping, sorry, slipping, skidding, um, load factor, and those different ailerons. We looked at the turn performance in terms of rate and radius of turn, the application, so two types of two three types of turns, make sure you know those configurations well. We looked at the airmanship and threat narrow major considerations, so make sure you um, um, you know you're balanced, uh, make sure you look at traffic, you don't stall the airplane. And then finally with the objectives, from memory, state what component of lift provides centripetal force in a turn. So if you want, you can, I can pause the video at the moment and then for a moment and um, you can um, come up with the answers. But now I'll read the answers. So state what component of lift provides centripetal force in a level turn. So it's the horizontal square of lift. Say what type of turn would you experience a tendency to overbank, so in a climbing turn and level turn. Say what the effect would be on the saw speed with the increase in angle of bank. So as you increase angle bank, the source speed increases. And as I describe what effect increasing angle bank would have on the radius of turn. So when you increase angle bank, the radius of turn decreases and your rate increases as well. So uh, that's the end of this brief. So thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next brief.